Hi guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a family portrait and I've told you guys before, I did all the big houses. Um, I did the Amouage, the Creeds, the uh, Guerlains, the Rojas, the houses I have a lot of bottles of. I already knocked out at the beginning of uh, this channel's journey. And um, so I'm starting to aggregate some of the uh, houses that I still have a couple bottles of, you know, enough to make up a family portrait and um, putting them together so as we can still talk about the fragrances. And I just want this to be kind of a relaxed video. Yesterday's haul video was anything but relaxed. I was fawning over the bottles like a schoolgirl, uh, you know, fawning over her uh, rock singer crush or whatever you wanted to call it. I felt like a schoolgirl fawning over these bottles. And the one that I fawned over the most uh, is this vintage Charles of the Ritz. Koros, who somebody verified was from 1984. Um, and I just did a fresh couple sprays. I don't know if you can see the sheen on my hand. Old Koros. Um, I don't think I have the words to really talk about this yet. It's my scent of the day, so we're doing scent of the day. We're talking about it. Look, it's got a, my bottle came with a rope that got cut off. It was probably hanging somewhere. I just imagine it, you know, hanging in some uh, drugstore at the bottom shelf with dust all over it. Uh, somewhere in the world, no one knew what they had. And um, this is an amazing fragrance. And I had to chuckle a little bit reading the uh, some of the Fragrantica comments. Some of the young guys, you know, that are maybe not as experienced in the fragrance game, you know, really making fun of this. Um, it just kind of puts a smile on my face because to me, this is a masterpiece, um, masterpiece of masterpieces. Old Koros is, um, you know, the, the, the one thing that I can say with certainty is most people think because they used real civet back in the day instead of civetone or whatever synthetic civet they're using mostly that the civet is just huge and in your face and dirty and it's the most dirty animalic thing you've ever smelt and that's actually not the case the civet is here it is dirty but there's also this underlying beauty of it that the synthetic civet smells maybe a little bit more harsh that twang that sharp twang is a little bit amped up because it's a synthetic whereas here there's this, there's this uh, beautiful natural smell, almost like you get with natural musk. There's this, you know, it can't be recreated is, is what keeps popping through my head. No matter how synthetics, no matter how good synthetics get, I don't think they'll be able to recreate this. Um, and that's why this is so special. Look at the, look at the atomizer. Look at the stain on the atomizer. Um... I, I, I love this fragrance. Uh, so happy to finally have a bottle. Uh, it, is, um, it is a blessing. And I know I've said it before. I'll say it again. Anuj, thank you, my friend. Absolute. Um, you know, one of the top bottles in my collection now. Let's put it that way. And I instantly made it my scent of the day. And I'm loving it. By the way, I wore number 22 to bed last night. And it is beautiful as well. Uh, it feels like this spicy lotion. I get this lotion. The aldehydes give almost this lotion-like vibe with beautiful florals. And I could smell it in the morning when I woke up, too. W what a stunning fragrance number 22 is. If you're a fan of florals, that is an amazing fragrance. And um, the quality of the ingredients that Chanel used, unbelievable. I mean, top-notch. Um, okay, so let's do this family portrait. We're going to start with, this is going to be two houses, um, and one is going to be the house of um, Clive Christian, and the other is going to be the house of um, La Tizanne, La Tizanne Parfumé, and uh, so La Tizanne Parfumer is the second house. This is, you can see, I've got a couple sample sets here that I'll show you. And I'll show you some of the full bottles. Before we do the sample sets, though, let's um, let's talk about the house themselves. So 
The first house is Clive Christian, and I'm going to read you a little interesting flat fact, flacked? Interesting fact blurb that um, Parfumo puts out. I love these little things, by the way. Uh, it says, the British fragrance brand Clive Christian Perfume it emerged from the Crown Perfumery Company. They actually purchased the, per the Crown Perfumery Company so they could use um, the Crown cap, that style that was copyrighted in the bottle and stuff like that. Um, the predecessor already had a large following as the company's bottles contained an approved representation of Queen Victoria's crown since 1872. This remained the case after Clive Christian acquired the company in 1999. There you go. Um... The brand takes several approaches to the production of its exquisite fragrances. For example, traditional and ancestral methods are combined with ultra-modern know-how. The, the whole process is led by a hand-picked team of international perfumers who pour their wealth of experience into each bottle. To live up to the long tradition and the royal crown, the aromas of the House of Clive Christian perfume should reflect beauty, elegance, perfection, passion, and luxury. This is achieved, for example, by the fact that each fragrance contains between 20 and 25% pure perfume. The fragrances of Clive Christian Perfume are available for women and men. In terms of aromas, the company offers numerous options from jasmine, amber, and pepper to citrus and musk, leather, and rose. The product ranges serves all preferences and passions. Clive Christian Perfume regularly brings new creations to the fragrance market, and despite the wide variety of products, the flacons always have something in common. The vials are all kept simple yet elegant, you are already visually spreading a touch of luxury, and they are closed with a replica of the Royal Crown of 1872. So, um, Clive Christian is kind of one of those um, high-end, you know, bougie brands, you could say, that... Um, they're kind of up there with Creed to me as far as, you know, presentation goes. And some of their fragrances are outrageously priced. I'll, I'll show you which ones I think are, are not worth it. But first, we're going to start with one of the ones that is worth it. And I've shown this box before on my channel. This is the Ostrich box. You can see the Clive Christian logo embossed right there. Ostrich box, me lord. Uh, yes, Ostrich box. It actually is a really nice box. Uh, if I carried my fragrances around this way, I would really enjoy it. Um, and it opens up like so. And it has the Clive Christian logo there. Very plush. Very silken smooth. And then, of course, it sits in a bed of silk. All of this is like pre-Rosia um, days. So, actually... There were fragrances like fragrance brands like this for a long, long time. This um, fragrance is called C for Men, and this is a 50 ml bottle uh, that you can see. I have made a pretty good dent in. I actually really like this fragrance. This is uh, a fragrance that came out a couple years after an international hit from the house of Tom Ford. Um, which was called Tuscan Leather. And um, this is Clive Christian's take, if you will. There's the um, crown, the tacky-looking crown. Um, this is Clive Christian's take on Tuscan Leather. Um, it apparently has oud in it, although I don't know how much oud my nose detects, but you know what we say on, on Ramsey's channel. If the brand says it has oud, then we'll say that they're correct and it has oud in it. Um, who knows how much oud is in there, but uh, they, they do say that there is oud involved. Uh, and it's just a little bit more nuanced. There's LME. It's a very complex fragrance, actually. Mate tea with LME thyme and um, citruses at the top. Christ Christian Provenzano is the perfumer, by the way, with cloves, raspberry, orris, jasmine, cardamom, rose, saffron, cinnamon, and cistus. And the base is uh, amber, tree moss, costus, guyac wood, leather, musk, oud, styrax, tobacco, tonka, vanilla, frankincense, cedar, and cypress. Uh, it's a very complex fragrance. And it says here that the production was apparently discontinued on Parfumo, which is a little bit sad. 
because this is one of the best fragrances that Clive Christian did. Some of their new stuff that I see put out, um, I am not really interested in trying some of that stuff. Um, you know, they're doing all these flankers now, and you know how these brands get. But this, if you can find this, um, C for men, um, and you like leather scents like I do, this might be one to scoop up. There's still bottles floating around. The House of Clive Christian doesn't get much hype. I don't see it talked about very much. I do see it talked about, but not very much. You know, it's kind of one of those things that, um, for whatever reason, it never really got the hype. I don't think it ever really had a hit. You know, Creed had a Ventus that brought in the bros, if you will. Um, it brought in the people who don't know much about Cologne, um, you know, no Aventus. And Clive Christian never really had that hit. So even though they have great fragrances like this, uh, that sit in an ostrich box, me lord, it's still not really, um, you know, it's not really mainstream, I would say, to me anyways. Um, but this is what a full presentation looks like. And, um, you know, they're expensive though. That's the downfall with the House of Clive Christian. Now, let me show you the second presentation, which is three 30 ml bottles that I have. And the next fragrance we're going to talk about is, is 1872 for men. Now, this one opens up like so. And voila, you get a blurb about each one. And you get the bottles themselves. So we're going to talk about these three. The first one is going to be 1872 for men. This is a fragrance that I've noticed has been being talked about all of a sudden uh, by some people who uh, I will occasionally watch their channel from the background just to see what kind of insane things that they have to say. Um, and... 1872 for men is a citrus fragrance, basically. If you like fragrances like um, Creed's Royal Water, that's the juniper heavy one. Um, this is similar to that, you know, citrusy style. Um, it came out in 2001. By the way, C for men came out in 2010, if I didn't say already. So 1872 for men. Um... Has, it was created by Giza Schoen, by the way, who's a good perfumer, and I really like his work, but I don't care so much for this fragrance. It's a good fragrance, don't get me wrong, but, you know, they're charging something like $500 or something for 100 ml. Um, this little 30 ml is definitely all I need in my collection. It's pineapple, bergamot, galbanum, grapefruit, lavender, lime, mandarin, orange, nutmeg, petit gras, pepper, peach, rosemary. There's a ton of notes, but basically what it comes down to is it's a citrus fragrance with some greenery, you know, with some aromatic green and floral facets. The florals here admittedly are nice, but are they $500 nice? No. I think I would rather just wear Eau de Rochus. That has florals and citruses, and you can pick it up for $30. Uh, Eau de Rochus Ohm. And um, so the the heart is where the florals kick in. You get cyclamen, freesia, jasmine, clary sage, and tagets, and then the base is amber, labdanum, musk, patchouli, frankincense, and cedar. Sounds like it's going to be a complex fragrance with all these things happening, and you don't really get that. You just get the citrusy, green, fresh fragrance that in the summer, granted, smells good. It smells better than wearing Sauvage or something like that, but um, I would never buy a full bottle of this. Uh, if, so, if, if, if I just inherited a 100 milliliter bottle from somebody, would I wear it in the summer? Occasionally, but... It's not something I would reach for very often. Um, so that is one that I'm glad I just have a little 30 ml uh, sample of. And I'll read you the little, um, I'll read you the blurb, which says, Virility is given a delicate and refined touch in this complex of deep, woody textures infused with a gentle spice. Uh, okay, so 
Let's go on to the next one, and this is the most out insanely priced fragrance in their entire collection. It says, uh, this is number one for men, by the way. And number one for men um, is a nice floral fragrance. If you like fragrances like Joy from uh, Patau Porome, if you like um, Amouage Gold, for example, that's a floral masculine with some civet, and, and it's a little bit animalic. Um, this one is more emphasis on the florals. X for men, or I'm sorry, um, uh, number one for men, is more emphasis on the florals. It's extremely powdery. Okay, so if you are somebody that doesn't like powdery fragrances, I've recommended fragrances that I personally love, like... Uh, Lagerfeld Cologne for Men from 1978, Abbey Rouge from 1965, uh, from Guerlain, and some people have reported back that those are just too powdery for them. If that's you, this is definitely a pass, a big pass, because this is powder. Um, think of the powder that you get from the heliotrope in um, Le Bleu. So you get this heliotrope. This is also 2001, by the way, but this was created by a perfumer I know nothing about. Uh, Patricia Cho, I think her name is. And um, she did this. She did 1872 for women. She also did uh, X for women, I believe, um, which X for men is coming up next. That's one of the Clive Christians I actually really do like. But she didn't do much else, uh, to be honest with you. Um... So she kind of did some Clive Christians and a couple of fragrances I've never heard of. Azure Crystal and uh, Liquid Sun, Love Grass. I've never heard of any of these fragrances. Um, and But this is a, this is a complex floral fragrance that the blurb on it says, Famed for its masterful balance of rare and precious ingredients, number one delivers a superlative punch of potent yet delicate notes. And this used to be marketed as the most expensive. Oh yeah, it still does says it. It actually says it right there on the bottle. The world's, come on baby, focus for me. The world's most expensive perfume. Can you see that? So very cringe-worthy advertising in my opinion. What made this the most expensive perfume at the time, which by the way, it's not the most expensive perfume any, anymore. There's a house called Spirit of Dubai that put out a fragrance that is more expensive than this. Look up the Spirit of Dubai. Look up the highest, um, uh, most expensive fragrance from Spirit of Dubai. You will be blown away uh, by the presentation and all that stuff. It's like a work of art. But the reason that this was the most expensive um, fragrance in the world is because they adored the bottle with like an $80,000 diamond. Uh, so it wasn't the juice, it was the diamond that they put on top of the bottle. And then they claimed, oh, it's the most expensive perfume in the world. So they still sell this juice for outrageous amounts of money. Um, and it's a good floral. Uh, most men would probably have a hard time wearing this. I will wear this sometimes, but admittedly halfway through the day I'm pretty sick of it already by the time I, I do wear it uh, it's tarragon grapefruit cardamom caraway lime mandarin orange nutmeg and paprika in the top it's all about the mid uh, of heliotrope iris jasmine lily of the valley rose and ylang ylang that's that's the that's the real meat and potatoes of number one for men and there is a number one for men and a number one for women by the way um and this is the number one for men. You can actually see it. It says it on the bottom of the bottle right there. But they also make a number one for women, but they're very close from my understanding. And then it's amber, musk, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, vetiver, and cedar. So, um, I, I mean... What else can you, I don't know how else to say what I'm trying to say about it. It's very, meh. I'm, I'm not too impressed with number one for men. Um, I'm not too impressed with 1872 for men. I did like C, and I like this one. This is the one that I would get a full bottle of. I would like a 50 or 100 ml bottle of this. This is X for men. 
And X is a fragrance that was created by Giza Schoen in 2001. And what I like about this fragrance is um, it's, it's bergamot, cardamom, ginger, and juniper. Focus on the cardamom uh, and... In the heart, there is a pimento and iris note. So you get this spicy cardamom with pimento, which also gives this little bit of um, spice. And then iris, beautiful iris note, but it's not as powdery as number one for men. There are some florals in here. There's jasmine, but it kind of gets swallowed up by the rest of the fragrance, which is cedarwood, beautiful cedarwood, beautiful labdanum beautiful vanilla. I, um, the vanilla and the cinnamon in this play off of each other gorgeously. So you get real ambergris apparently, styrax, labdanum, vetiver, moss, cinnamon, cedarwood, vanilla in the base. Uh, this is resinous and thick enough that um, you could wear this in the cooler weather, but it still has a little bit of freshness from the ginger and bergamot that you could probably wear it in, you know, days like today where it's 60 degrees in Texas. Um, this, this would work beautifully, and this is one I would like a full bottle of. I would love a full bottle of X for men. I really like this fragrance. I think this is a good fragrance. I think Giza Schoen did a great job with this. And I think this is a boss, this is a boss scent. You know, it feels like an executive scent to me. It feels like someone who is, um, you know, gonna pull up in their fancy car, get out, they're wearing good clothes. Uh, you know, they go to the office, they go up the elevator to the top floor. Everyone in the meeting room is waiting for them. That's what this scent reminds me of. Number one for men does not remind me of that at all. Um, and 1872 for men just feels like a normal run-of-the-mill citrus, but this feels like a special fragrance. Um, so X for men is one to put on the list. Roja did a, Roja did a fragrance, um, that I own a decant of, um, that's very close to that. It's very close to X for men, and... Let me see if I can remember what that was real quick so I can tell you guys about it. Maybe I'll even do a comparison video one day for you if you care. Um, the Roja... Oh, by the way, there is one other note I should mention in X for Men, and it is um, rhubarb. There's apparently a rhubarb note in here, and rhubarb is a very underused note. Um... So this is a good fragrance. This is a very good fragrance, and it's probably overpriced, but uh, if you have some money to throw around, you can go for this, or you can go for a fragrance called Reckless Pour Homme by um, Roja Dove. Um, that's another one that's a very similar take on this DNA, but Reckless Pour Homme came out a decade later. Uh, this was the original version of this DNA from 2001, and the copy says a singular blend of extracts sourced from the furthest corners of the world. Fine-tuned for the purposes of today's modern explorer. Okay, enough fantasy stuff, shall we? Um, let's put this back and let's jump to the next niche house, which is going to be L'Artisan Parfumaire. Um, and I'm going to show you a few other little 30 ml bottles. This is really how I should buy fragrances because I don't need 100 ml bottles of everything. Um, except for old Coros. Everyone needs 100 ml bottles of that. Okay, the first one is a Jean-Claude Elena, actually, believe it or not. And it's called Lo de Ambre Extreme. Now, Lo de Ambre Extreme also came out in 2001, just like the Clive Christians we were talking about. Must have been a popular year for fragrance. Um, this fragrance really shocked me. Um, I was not expecting to love this fragrance as much as I did. It is cardamom, nutmeg, mace, and pepper in the top with patchouli, Turkish rose, benzoin, sandalwood, musk, tonka, and vanilla. The tonka and vanilla um, and benzoin 
are the stars of the show, which make this an amber, go figure, uh, low to ombre extreme. There was a low to ombre that came out uh, something like, you know, 15 or 20 years before 2001, uh, but it didn't have the longevity, so they made low to ombre extreme, and Jean-Claude Elena knocked it out of the park. This is a amazing amber. One of the best ambers in my collection, actually. Um, if you're a big fan of amber fragrances, this is one that you should not sleep on. I was, I'm, sometimes I'm a little hit or miss on ambers. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I find them boring. This one kept my attention when I, I wore it to bed once. I've never given it a full wear. Uh, it's probably gonna be too hot for that soon, but uh, I'll tell you what, if you're an amber lover, if you like fragrances like Grand Soir and stuff like that, check out Low to Ombre Extreme. Don't sleep on this one. And try to get one of these old bottles if you can. Anytime you can go older bottles on some of these brands, that's probably what you want to do. Although at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you that uh, one of the newer bottles that I, that I went for actually did work out. And it is a good reformulation, if you will. The next one in this little 30 ml um, packet that I want to talk to you guys about is a Bertrand Duchafor. So as you can see, we're talking high quality perfumers for the House of L'Artisan. This is Mon Numero 10. Okay, so Mon Numero 10 uh, is classic Bertrand Duchafor because it does have a frankincense note. Came out in 2009. And you know Bertrand Duchafour made something else very special right around 2008 called Jubilation 25. So he was in the mood of frankincense. And um, this is frankincense cedar with red pepper and cinnamon. And I almost detect like this Divana note uh, that comes and goes. It's, 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 um, it's spicy because of the pepper but it's also smoky. The frankincense gives off this um, burnt quality sometimes. And this is another one that I wore to bed. I loved it. Um, I've never given it a full wear, but um, Bertrand Duchafour is one of my favorite perfumers. And I think this is, um, I'm glad to have this. I really, really enjoyed wearing this fragrance. So, um, two out of the three 30 ml so far are good. Now we're gonna go to a full bottle and this is another Bertrand du Chafour. This is called Al Oud. Now, uh, Al Oud is L'Artisan throwing their hat in the Oud ring. They did it in 2009 when everyone needed an Oud after Tom Ford's Oud Wood came out a year or two before this. Um, what Bertrand du Chafour did here is he made an oud fragrance that oud was not necessarily the center piece. There is oud, um, but there's other facets which make this scent interesting. Specifically, cumin and date. Those two uh, are a tag team that have um, come together, let's say, in another fragrance that I really like uh, called La Enfant. Terrible from uh, Javoy. And um, cumin date combo works really well there. And it works really well here. Um, there's also iris and leather and cardamom. It's very spicy in the opening. The cumin, especially in the opening, um, will, will really hit you. And it might even shock you the first 10 minutes. But let it dry. And you'll realize it's a good fragrance. There's a lovely rose note, too, that tends to come out. And then the base is myrrh, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, cedar, and civet. That civet mixes with the cumin, mixes with the frankincense and saffron, because there is a bit of that in here as well. That's his DNA, you know. He's a, he's a, he's a uh, frankincense, you know, he is an incense master, you could say. Uh, and um, good fragrance. Uh, but I wish I paid a little bit less and got this in a 30 ml too. I don't really need a 100 ml bottle. I did get a good price on this though. Um, but there are some differences in the bottles I should mention. This is a... This is a seven-sided bottle. This is one way you can, you can tell when Latizan Parfumer bottles were, um, issued. 
This next one, it's going to be called Zonka, is actually an eight-sided bottle. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. This is a seven. This is an eight-sided bottle. Um, and Oh, maybe not. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe they're both sevens. Um, maybe the new ones are different. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, there's seven too. I must have been mistaken. I thought there were differences in the uh, amount of sides that the bottle had. Um, there is a difference in the cap though. You can see the older cap just kind of has that embossed look uh this one's actually embossed in the cap itself whereas this is almost just like it's flat um so there is that but the next one is zonka and uh zonka is another bertrand du chauffeur uh and this came out in 2006 and this is one of my favorite um Fragrances that uses two notes that are very rare. One is peony, which peony is a flower that is one of the most beautiful smells you will ever smell, but it's very soft. You could be right next to a peony and you wouldn't be able to smell it. You have to put your nose straight into the flower. You get that flower in a fragrance called Diaman, which came out a couple years before Zonka. Zonka and Diaman are the two most beautiful um, peony floral fragrances I've ever smelled. This one, and of course Diaman has its own other notes that revolve around the peony. This one uses the note of lychee, which is also used in a fragrance called The Moon, which is a very expensive Frederick Mall fragrance. Um, the lychee in this is very close to the lychee in The Moon. So you get this lychee peony with cardamom, it's spicy, and then he brings in the trick, the incense trick. There's frankincense, there's vetiver. There's vetiver in this, and there's vetiver in the next one too that I'm gonna show you. There's a beautiful iris note in this too, by the way. The iris in Zonka um, kind of took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it. And then he mixes it with leather, vetiver, papyrus, so there's a papyrus note too here, by the way, with masala chai. And the combination is insane. This is an insane fragrance, uh, but I love what it does. It's so unique. Um, the thing about Par L'Artisan Parfumer is um, they don't perform very well historically. So it kind of puts some people off, but I would wear this anytime, specifically spring, or even summer, I would wear this. This is a beautiful frankincense and vetiver for summer. Um, it's so it's so unique, you know. That's what I love about these type of fragrances is they are unique. And there's another unique fragrance that is from L'Artisan that I uh, would love, and I just can't find called Travesty de Bosphores, I believe. Um, and I can't find that fragrance. Well, I found it, but it's. Um, it, you know, the guy that basically took a, a month to ship my fragrances has it, and I really don't want to buy from him again. Um, if anyone has a bottle of um, Traversé Travers de Bosphore, let me know. But the last one is the one everyone knows about, and that is Timbuktu. This is a newer bottle. This is the older 30 ml bottle that I scored in that pack, that 30 ml pack. And I'll tell you what. Um, this actually is a good reformulation. See, the thing about Timbuktu is that it never was a beast in the first place. This is not a beast, even in this formulation. So it's just missing a little bit of depth from the new one, a little bit. You might even have a hard time telling the two apart. Um, but Timbuktu is one of the most creative vetivers. He was on, Bertrand Duchefour was on a very creative... Um, he was in a very creative state of mind when he created these two. These two are both vetivers. They're both very creative because this one uses green mango uh, and frankincense. And he kept the, the vetiver papyrus thing going. 
And he added a note of uh, Caro Corundi, Benzoin, Myrrh, Patchouli, Cardamom, Pink Pepper. There's frankincense. Maybe there's even a Devana note in these two. Uh, Devana is um, a Bertrand Dusha for specialty. And so, um, very happy to have these. Timbuktu is another, if you want to wear a vetiver in the uh, summer, in the warmer weather, and you don't want it to be encre noir, dark kind of feel, Timbuktu works beautifully. And it, it because it also doesn't, um, it doesn't have this huge projection that's going to put people off. You know, it's a little bit softer and closer to the skin. And so, because of that, um, I'm actually very happy to have a backup bottle of Timbuktu. Uh, I love wearing this in the heat, and the heat is right around the corner in Texas. This is 2004, by the way, so Timbuktu is 2004, Zonka is 2006. And um, so that's my family portrait of L'Artisan and Clive Christian. Let me know if you have experience with these. Let me know if there are other L'Artisan or Clive Christian fragrances I should hunt down. Um, I love seeing your faces in the comments. I just thought we'd do a little bit of a relaxed video after the excitement of yesterday with the unboxing and the dual videos. Um, so, as always, I appreciate you guys sharing some time with me. A like and a comment is always appreciated, but if you don't feel like it, that's fine. I'm doing this simply to share my love and passion with you guys. I hope you guys are appreciating the videos and... Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'll interact with you guys. I'll respond. I try to respond to every single message. That's my goal. So uh, if you write me, you will get a response. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.